Welcome to Lethal Hammer's YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at the 980X processor from Intel, the newest 6-core processor. Uh, what we're going to be doing is showing you how to overclock this chip to 4.44 gigahertz. Uh, today we're going to be using the EVGA X58 uh, three-way SLI classified board, uh, typically known as the E760. Um, very solid board and uh, runs and plays very nicely with this chip. Uh, so let's jump right in here. What, we're, what I typically do is, uh, well, as you can see, we're in the BIOS already. Uh, on this specific board, hit the delete key during post, brings you right in. Uh, but what I like to do is just go through the power management setup, get rid of anything that's going to cause problems uh, while overclocking. Typically, you don't want to have sleep mode and stuff like that enabled. Uh, can just cause problems down the road with your overclock or not letting your system wake back up. Uh, I usually like to go in as well and boost uh, the maximum payload size for our PCI Express slots. And along with that, make sure our boot priority is our PCI Express uh, for a niche display. Uh, pretty basic settings. Uh, next thing we'll jump into is the frequency and voltage control. Uh, we already know that we want to get to uh, roughly around 4.44 gigs uh, on the processor clock. So let's see where we can get. Let's see, 31 brings us at 4.1. 33 should get us close. We can bump that up here. It gets us pretty close. 4.466. Uh, as you can see, our memory is not exactly where we would want it. Uh, let's see here, we are running 1866 memory in this case, so we would like to get as close to that as possible. Let's see where this is, let's see where our divider of 214 lands us. 1894, uh, well within spec on this memory. We are running the Corsair Dominators, um, so they're uh, very nice. Uh, I don't typically mess with the memory low gap. I know some people have uh, uh, good results with it, but uh, I typically don't mess with it. Uh, specific settings on these chips are 99924, but uh, knowing that uh, my settings from before that I do hit stable for a nice 4.4, uh, I have to leave these uh, settings pretty loose. So I'm going to leave them at auto for now, uh, and if we run into any issues, we can come back and adjust those as needed. Uh, the next thing I always do is I go into our voltage settings. Uh, I always go without vdroop. This allows you to set your system up to pull or uh, you know, plus or minus uh, extra voltage as needed. Um, typically to get 4.4 uh, on this chip you're going to need at least 1.45 uh, volts on your v-core. Uh, but the nice thing is, is you can play around with the CPU VTT voltage uh, and get it to fluctuate around uh, as needed. So usually I'll set it around uh, 1.4375 and I'll give my VTT a nice uh, plus 250. Um, nice thing again, these are the 32 nanometer processors. They run really cool, actually use a lot less power. Uh, the 45 nanometers require at least 1.8 on the PLL, our CPU PLL and IOH PLL. Uh, nice thing is we can drop down to 1.425 in this case, so it's actually using less power than the 45 nanometer counterparts. I usually like to bump up my QPI, uh, keep it in line around 1.275. Uh, it's usually a little bit better uh, to run it at those higher settings than the 1.1 that it comes with. Just allows a little bit more stability across the board. Uh, obviously, I always set the dim uh, voltage to what the manufacturer is requiring. Uh, get the best results that way. And the IOV core I don't touch, the IO, ICH, IO voltage, and the I, ICH V core. Those are all uh, things I don't touch unless I'm running SLI. In this case, I only have one graphics card in the system. Um, if you are running multiple, sometimes you do need to adjust the ICH and the IOH V core uh, accordingly. Usually 1.25, 1.275, uh, usually do it. Uh, but in this case, also we have the VTT and the CPU uh, PWM frequencies. Uh, since we are going to be pushing the system quite far, I do like to boost those up. Uh, the CPU PWM frequency, uh, you can either go 1210 or 1333, depending on your chip that you're working with, um, uh, will you know, depict wh what you really want to go with. But in this case, we're going to go with the 1210, uh, as I know that runs fairly stable on this uh, specific chip. Uh, next thing we want to jump into the CPU features. I like to disable all the extra features. Uh, 
turbo mode function seems to be auto enabled uh, before the last BIOS update this was you could disable it uh, I don't know if it's something that ties to the turbo mode uh, this outside one but that's our, that's disabled in the other section the QPI frequency I like to boost to 6.4 these chips love to have uh, a pretty high uh, frequency on that channel so uh, but outside of that settings look okay at this point uh, oh we have the CPU uncore frequency which we definitely want to make sure it's running at least 2x times more or at least two times our target memory frequency so in this case we'll go 28x which puts us at 3789 it's actually a little under but uh... Eh, we'll just leave it at 28 uh, again another item that you can play around with if you're getting uh, stability problems uh, but outside of that everything is set and uh, we'll save and exit and restart.